I'm Phil Lockwood, and I've spent the past 15 months traveling the world with the woman of my dreams and our three amazing children. Our adventures have taken us through the jungles of Costa Rica and deserts of Mexico, to the islands of Belize and shipwrecks of the Exumas, to the Renaissance villages of Tuscany and marinas of the French Riviera. But for this trip, Erin and I ditched the kids and jumped the pond for a week-long river cruise through the rolling countryside and sprawling vineyards of Provence and Burgundy, France. Friends and family have been raving about these more intimate upscale, adults-only cousins of the typical cruise experience. But do they live up to the Lockwood standard? In this episode, you'll get to experience our stateroom, every nook and cranny of the ship, the local vibes at various ports of call, and plenty of Michelin-starred French dishes, French cheeses, French sweets, and of course, French wine. Here we are at O'Hare Airport in Chicago, waiting to take a flight to Munich, Germany, and then another flight to Lyon, France. Now, truth be told, I'm not a big cruise guy. In fact, I'm about to turn 28, and I've only been on one cruise my entire life. And that was a Disney wow. cruise, which was mostly for the kids. But before we even get to Lyon and get on our cruise, I am super psyched out of my mind over our flight we're about to get on because we're going to be in the Polaris business class. Yeah, we got upgraded for free, which happens a lot, although this is the first time on an international flight that has happened to us, and the first time to this scale where we're going to have the full life flat seat so we can sleep all night, which should really help out with the jet lag, which I don't even believe in. <laughs> window always. Always. Bill gets the window. <laughs> I'm over here and I get a neighbor. So nice little blanket and there's an extra one under there too and this is like a memory foam pillow and we also have a Saks Fifth Avenue pillow and then this I'm really excited about this though because I'm thinking and hoping there's a toothbrush in here it's a toothbrush and little Kleenex or tissues no Mask. This is the kind of mask I want to be wearing. And here's the other thing I really wanted. Earplugs. But we don't really need the earplugs because look in this cubby. Nice little headset. Remote control. Ooh, yes. It pops out. Oh, but you can't take it with you. <laughs> Bill and I usually watch a movie together, so. I don't know if we're gonna be able to time it perfectly this way. Yeah, it's too bad we didn't get these two. I know, yeah, but this I think is gonna go up. Ooh, look at that. Just press the little button. Goes right up. All right, I'm gonna get set up now. Down below here, we push this in. Little place to put your laptop right in here. We're gonna have a mirror. A little night light right here, reading light. And one of my favorite things about the Dreamliner is the huge window. It just keeps going. So we headed on our first leg, albeit much later than scheduled. All right, so we've landed in Munich, but we've got a little problem. Our flight was delayed from Chicago to get here about two hours, which was just enough time for us to miss our flight, our connection to Lyon. They booked us on a new flight, but we're gonna get in after the cruise starts. So we're gonna see what we can do and hopefully we can still make this cruise because that would be kind of a disaster. The flight was great, but we knew right away we had a problem. It's now a little bit after noon and we're supposed to be on the boat by four o'clock, is that right? Well, that's when we can start um, getting on the boat, but the boat leaves at 10 p.m. Oh, okay. So we have a little bit of time, but right now we don't have a good flight. No, our flight is we're in, the wrong we're in the wrong country. We're in the wrong country and at this point, they put us on a new flight that lands at 10 p.m. So we're gonna find, uh, I guess, customer service here. Yeah, I like this Today, we'd be able to call United's dedicated Premier 1K service line for help. But at the time of this trip, we hadn't quite hit that status. Lufthansa's only solution was to replace our previous single flight to Lyon with two flights that would probably get us to our cruise in time. Okay, so now we're boarding our flight from Munich to Dusseldorf, where hopefully we make it onto our flight from Dusseldorf to Lyon. And hopefully we make it on time so that we can get on our cruise ship. A lot of hopefully. It was more moving parts and we had to board immediately. 
We've now landed in Dusseldorf and we have Dusseldorf. Dusseldorf. <laughs> We've been to so many airports. Um, but we're here and now we have one more flight to go to get to Lyon and hopefully that will be on time and then we will be there. So I'm ready to get this mask off because I've had it on for what, 30 plus hours? I'm starting to get a rash. As we boarded for the final leg, we were thankful that everything seemed to be running on time at this point. We made it to Lyon, but we still have to get ourselves to the ship. And it's 8.46 right now. We gotta get our bags, and then it's a 45 minute drive. So we're cutting it so, so close. There it is. Having our private driver meet us outside a baggage claim was reassuring, although that was probably naive since little else had gone right all day. 26 minutes. 26 minutes? Yes. Oh, perfect. So we're about five minutes away and we might have as much as 20 minutes to spare. Looks like we're gonna make it, I hope so. Uh, it's taking so long to get there because there are a ton of road closures. The first 20 minutes of the drive were pretty painless, except for one hiccup. We can't get in the parking lot, so we've gotta walk. Okay, this is gonna be so close. He actually just got out of the car to go see. He wanted to look over the edge and see if he could see the boat so he knows where we need to walk. But with 19 minutes to spare now, there is no extra time to spare. And if we don't make it on here, all because of one delayed flight from Chicago. Alors c'est à l'opposé alors de l'hôtel. Our driver just couldn't find our port. Oh my god, this is seriously stressing me out. I feel like I'm breaking out in hives. But with a few instructions from the cruise director, we finally made it with about four minutes to spare. Hi, hi Andrea. <laughs> Sorry for your adventure, but now you are in a good place. I hope so. You are home. Andrea from the cruise is here to greet us and she says that it's all going to be okay. We're going to make it. Thank you. I'm glad you're here. Very <laughs> good. What a day and a half. What about two days maybe even? For you, it's definitely two days. And for me, it feels like two days. It's probably closer to 24 hours. But uh, wow, that's, that's the risk in a few things. Number one, having an absolute deadline like this where we have to show up or miss the cruise. Uh, number two, it's one of the risks of air travel right now. Well, learn from our mistake and arrive a day early if you're ever doing a cruise or an event that cannot wait for you. And then just right. like that. And it's official. Oh. We made it. Oh my gosh. Hey, we just arrived. Hi, nice to meet you, but I'm on board. <laughs> we made it. I'm gonna get out of this monkey suit and I saw some wine over here. <gasps> really? Uh-huh. The views are so pretty. It's a totally different perspective being on the river and looking at the city. Well, I think we're gonna finish off this food, polish off these bottles of wine, unpack our bags, get settled in, but stick with us because we'll give you a full tour of this cabin as well as the rest of the ship. And tomorrow we have our first excursion. All right, good night. We are gonna go meet up with our cruise director, Andrea, and the rest of the group that is doing the excursions with us. We disembarked the Amadeus Provence and began our guided bus tour through the world-famous vineyards of Burgundy in the fall. The views were inspiring as we passed through unforgettable stretches of land and picturesque village centers, setting the stage for an entire week of such visits. Day after day, we sailed north along the Rhone River, then back south to meet the Saone for various stops of equal beauty throughout the region of Provence. Endless access to cafes, cathedrals, art, bistros, business districts, government centers, and shops. The history and culture were oozing through every port, street, and alley. And did you know the city of Arles is home to another Roman Colosseum that's actually still in use today? As huge foodies, there was one experience that we definitely didn't want to miss during the cruise. Lunch in Isle Saint Laurent a tiny island in chalon sur saone that's accessible by a walkable bridge and home to multiple Michelin-starred restaurants all on one street. Here we are on Rue de Strasbourg, uh, where the Michelin-starred restaurants are. And this first one here, Aromatique, very interesting and different. This one, Chez Jules, got a star in 2017. Another one, Les Gourmands de Saint, and I'm only hoping I'm pronouncing it the right way. 
And here's the third one, parkour. And here's our restaurant, Le Bistro. Le Bistro is a friendly restaurant with an elaborate dinner menu, but a lunch experience that's very approachable and very affordable. A recent remodel has created an ambiance that's crisp and inviting. We're gonna do this tasting menu, 27 euro per person, three courses, and it includes tax and service. But first, if your mouth waters hearing about tasty bites like Paris mushroom and oyster mushroom tarts, morel and yellow wine siphon, poached egg, house smoked salmon, almond and hazelnut deer crumble, and seasonal vegetables that taste like they were plucked from a country garden in the 1200s, then all you need to do is get yourself here and brush up on your French and on the international language of yum. But back on the cruise ship, we spent days soaking up the countryside views from a very different perspective. As we traveled 850 total kilometers of river, passing through more than a dozen locks and seven ports of call, we learned one of the main draws of river cruises, getting to see a significant chunk of another country without having to move your butt. The scenery just comes to you. The Amadeus Provence is a 360-foot ship that was built in 2017. Her max speed is just over 12 miles per hour, and this was the very end of the season for this particular cruise, which runs from early April to the end of October. Our ship's name is Amadeus Provence, and we're going to give you a tour. So this is the main entrance area. You can get on board from the deck above, or like we just did, right here. And this is the gift shop. It's pretty small, but you'll see how it kind of spreads throughout the ship. And then just past reception is the restaurant. We got the whole place to ourselves, but that's not the case usually because there is a set dinner time of 7.30 and all the guests eat together. And each table has table mates. So you could potentially be sitting with other guests, which is great because then you make some friends on your vacation, just like we did. And then after dinner, we head upstairs to the lounge for some cocktails. So let me show you that. If we ever need to find our cruise director, we usually find her here at her station. But this was what I was talking about with the gift shop and how it's sort of spread throughout the ship. And this is where we get all of our yummy cocktails. On this trip, we have been really into espresso martinis and they make really good ones here. So we've had quite a few. We're on deck three, so the views are beautiful. And when we come up here for drinks and entertainment, there's usually live music after dinner or some sort of trivia game or something really fun to do. Now we're gonna head down this long hallway of cabins and show you ours. And here we are at cabin three, two, three. Come on in. First and foremost, my favorite feature and was such a pleasant surprise, this cabin has a walk-in closet. I also want to point out that this is not a typical king size bed. It's the two twins pushed together. And I might not be a fan of this. They use twin sheets on each of them. So not much cuddling time. Now here's a spot we spend a lot of time in. It's the mini bar. And it was lovely when we first got here and we were able to have some libations. And of course they supply us with water every day and get us some new bottles. But Better leave it to the pros to show you the more technical features. Phil's gonna do that. You have separate thermostat control right up here so you can set the temperature to whatever you want. You can see that we have outlets throughout so each one of the nightstands has one of these and they even hooked us up with some adapters at the front desks. Nice built-in nightstands. So you've got drawers here for all of your drones and everything else. Every day they make a little towel animal for you. Do you know what this one is, babe? Can you tell? Platypus. Penguin. Penguin. It's a penguin. <laughs> TV. There are, on any given day, only about 10 channels that actually work. Most of them are in Austrian or German, mm -hmm. and some of them sometimes are in French. We get CNN International sometimes, we get BBC sometimes. It's a real crapshoot. And on that note, the other thing that's a real crapshoot is the onboard internet. The Wi-Fi connection is free, but you really have very slow speeds almost every single place we go. So that's been very challenging for us trying to get work done while we are on the ship. Now, these are our keys for the room. They're huge and they're heavy and they're magnetic. So you just put it in there and you open the door. Anytime you leave the ship, you have to take these and trade them in for some cards that are called boarding passes. And you take those with you. That way they know if they have any keys left before leaving port, that means some people haven't returned. All right, let's check out the head. Okay, so this is actually a pretty good size for a cruise ship. We've got a nice big walk-in shower here. Everything in here is brand new. 
That's what's really amazing to me. The tiles in here are modern and beautiful. You've got plenty of storage over here for all of your toiletries. The shower head has the main shower head, as well as the orgasmatron. Very modern fixtures. If you need to steam clothes, you've got a clothesline in here so you can steam. Now this isn't a balcony room, but it's just as good because we just pull this back and there's a nifty little button right here. Voila! Voila, which means there in French. And now you have all this fresh air. All right, there's some really convenient stuff right outside this door. So right over here, we have a hairdresser, which is great because we have kind of fancy dinners every night. And if you want to do your hair, we've got this nifty little salon. And the very next door is the massage room. And right across the hallway is Phil's other office. Very simple gym. We have three exercise bikes, including one recumbent. You have the rowing machine, and then you have some of our functional equipment, like the workout ball, the yoga mat, some dumbbells, some workout bands, TV, so you can watch those 10 channels while you're getting your workout on. And it's almost always empty, so you'll pretty much have this place to yourself. There's one more lounge to show you, and that's the Amadeus Lounge. This is a much quieter area. People come here to read books and relax a little bit more. So we're gonna walk right on past and show you the outdoor areas. Now the pool is in the back of the boat. It's called the Sun Deck. And as you can imagine, we haven't been using it too much because it's a little cold right now. In warmer months, this will pop up and be a full bar. So keep that in mind when you're booking a trip. The rest of this level is just this massive deck and it's great for lounging, sunbathing. It also has a shuffleboard on the front of the ship, but you can't be up here all the time because we go under bridges that are sometimes too low and they have to put the guardrails down and even the bridge itself lowers to be pretty flat to that level. So there's a basic tour of the ship. The sun's going down, which means we've got to go get ready for dinner. A formal dinner is served nightly on the lower deck. In addition to having the same table mates every day, you also have the same servers. And each dinner features a unique menu where you can order multiple courses. There's a varied selection of meats, poultry, and seafood, as well as vegetarian and vegan options. By the way, there are also informal dining options throughout the day in the Panorama Bar, and those range from pastas and pastries to sandwiches and salads and past hors d'oeuvre. On the last night of our cruise, the staff treated everyone to a baked Alaska dessert celebration. It was a fantastic final send-off before saying goodbye to the crew and our new friends the next morning. After parting ways, we grabbed a taxi and set off on our final 24 hours of this trip. We're not ready to leave town just yet, so we're gonna spend the day here in downtown Lyon. We got a hotel room at the Hotel Carlton, which is right behind us. And we are gonna hit two incredible restaurants, one for lunch, one for dinner. But here are some fun facts. Lyon is the culinary capital of France, and as of now, there are 20 Michelin-starred restaurants. We're hitting two of them today. Another fun fact is that you will see a lot of restaurants called Bijons. That means it serves a classic Lyonnaise cuisine, which is more of a style of eating, and that is an appetizer, an entree, and a side. Third fun fact is that I did not dress well for this weather and I am freezing. Well, all of that description is making me very hungry, but we're gonna walk around until it's time for our reservation and then we're gonna get a bite. Lyon sits at the confluence of the rivers Rhone and Saône, about 300 miles southeast of its more famous big sister city, Paris. We could easily argue though that the city of Lyon is every bit as breathtaking being home to countless historical and architectural landmarks. What might be the best part of Lyon, though, is walking the alley-like streets that are filled with outdoor cafes and vendors and bakeries and pastry shops. There's so much to see and taste that we could barely peel ourselves away to head to lunch. But why take a taxi to the restaurant when you can earn your calories by closing those exercise rings on the way up Fouvier Hill? So we climbed all those stairs and we made it up here outside of our restaurant, La Terrasses which translates to the terraces of Lyon. So let's go check it out. We're gonna have a gorgeous view guaranteed because we're way up high. The restaurant is located within the Villa Florentine Hotel and serves lunch and dinner Monday through Saturday. It's one of the more epic dining options in Lyon because of the incredible menu, flawless service, and unbeatable perch above the city. We are overlooking the old village of Lyon. It's absolutely stunning. 
And I chose this restaurant because of the rave reviews and one in particular that talked about the reasonably priced lunch chef's tasting. And that's what we got in four courses. And we're starting with the leek. It looks like a stuffed leek with tons of veggies and looks delicious. For our next course, it's Arctic char. We got some apples and some puree, and it looks amazing. Oh man, that is so soft. The texture is not like fish. It's crazy. Third beautiful course is a veal with some cauliflower puree, and then I believe this is a cauliflower crisp. And sweet bread right over here. Very good. All the flavors are there. This is the best dessert in the entire world. She's in France with some cherry marmalade. Some of the best cheeses I think we have ever had, certainly in a dining setting, and went out with a bang with that. We have another meal to go, so we're gonna walk around town and burn some calories before that dinner. And for our final meal of the entire trip, it was a romantic dinner at downtown hotspot, Les Neuvième Art. Okay, gotta say that after that meal, it's no wonder how Chef Christophe earned those Michelin stars and his best craftsman of France distinction. Anderson, this has to be done in one bite. <laughs> Reflecting on the entire River Cruise experience, did it live up to the expectations and hype? There's no doubt that the laid-back, adults-only, scenic variety of this voyage was a very different kind of vacation. If you're up for the nomadic nature of a cruise, but prefer to avoid the kids, crowds, craziness, and cramped quarters of ocean cruising, you'll almost certainly enjoy this option. The experience may have even made a cruise guy out of me, after all. This cruise, which is just one of many offered by Amadeus, starts at around 1500 bucks per person, but we booked our voyage as part of the Inspirado Pass program, so we actually paid nothing beyond our monthly membership dues, and we got a big stateroom upgrade in the process. If you'd like to learn more about Inspirado Pass and how we use it for more than 90% of our luxury travel stays in multi-million dollar homes and five-star resorts, just go to followabc.com slash pass. Two years ago, we decided it was time for my ad agency to abandon the in-person five-day work week. So we 86 our office and work hours, allowing our own family of five to start traveling almost constantly. We now work, school, and explore in a new place every week, from our own mountain and beach homes to exotic villas, resorts, and yachts around the world. As we experience and support diverse cultures, we hope to inspire more families to design a life of freedom and adventure. Because there's a new American dream. It's one that's void of templated expectations, templated career paths, templated education, templated families, templated homes, and templated lives. Freedom's no longer American tagline. It's just the new global way of life. Every day that you spend doing something that doesn't fulfill you to your core, you're living your life on pause. You're deferring genuine family time with no guarantee that there will be a tomorrow or a someday. Some people follow that mentality their entire lives. We've chosen to never live that way again. We appreciate you following our journey. The more our channel grows, the more time we can spend traveling to more locations, contributing to these cultures, highlighting local businesses, and sharing inspiring stories from these communities. So please consider liking, commenting, and subscribing so that you can stick with us for the long haul.